Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to add some clarification to cost of finance. Okay, so I want to kind of clarify what cost of finance means and where that value is coming from. And we can do that well if we mix a uh, basic mortgage payment calculator with an amortization table. So I've already got a mortgage calculator started for a house with a certain down payment. The difference between those two is our loan amount. I'm going to play with a 15-year mortgage. I'll put an interest rate of 3.9%. Uh, I don't want to calculate the monthly payment, but I want Excel to do that for me. So I'm going to use a PMT function. I'm going to click on the cell that contains my rate, divide that by 12 to get a, and I clicked on the wrong cell. I'm going to click on the cell that contains my rate, divide it by 12 to get a monthly version, comma, click on the cell that contains the number of years, multiply that by 12 to get the number of months, and then I'm going to do a negative version of the loan amount. And the result is going to be the monthly payment for this particular house loan. Now the total paid is simply going to be equal to the monthly payment times the years I've paid it times 12 months per year plus the original down payment. So the total paid is always going to be in excess of the price of the item if there was a loan used to pay for that item. Cost of finance is going to be equal to the total paid minus the price of the item. So basically, because I borrowed $299,000 for this particular property, I had to pay interest. And the sum of that interest is basically the cost of finance. If I paid $349,000 as a down payment, that's basically paying cash, which means I had to borrow zero, which means my monthly payment was zero, which means my total paid is equal to the house price, which basically means there was no cost of finance because I didn't have to finance anything. I'll put this back to a more realistic number. Now to emphasize this and to find out, well, where's this 96,408 coming from? Well, that's where the amortization table comes in, in hand. So I've already got it started, but let me go ahead and start to construct it a little bit more. The payment in row one, the first payment is simply, and all the payments are gonna be equal to the calculated monthly payment. I'll use an absolute reference for that. Now, part of that payment goes to the principal of the loan. The other part goes to interest. I'm gonna calculate interest first because the interest is going to be based off of the debt, the outstanding debt. Now in the first payment, it's going to be based off of the loan amount. So I'll take the loan amount and I'm going to multiply that by my interest rate divided by 12. So in my first payment of $2,100 or $2,200, almost a thousand of that is just going to be in interest charges. The principal is going to be payment minus the interest. And so, of course, the principal portion and the interest portion summed together, those are going to total whatever the payment is. Now, the balance is going to get reduced. So my balance started off being the loan amount, but I'm going to subtract the amount I applied to principal. And so instead of owing 299,000, I now owe 297,775. I'm going to go and do the second row. Second row is a little bit different, but similar. Payment is going to be the same, so I can just fill that down one. Principal and interest should be similar. Let me do interest first. So interest is going to be based off of my previous month's balance times my interest rate, absolute, divided by 12. There we go. My interest should steadily reduce. Principal is going to be pretty much the same. It's going to be equal to my previous balance minus the principal of that particular month. So the balance will start to reduce. Now that this second row is constructed, I can select those and autofill it down. And you know you're going to be successful if the very last row, the last payment, your balance ends up being zero. So now that we have that amortization table set up, we can start to figure some things out and see where things are happening. For instance, for this particular loan, $349,000 house, $50,000 down, $299,000 loan, 15 years, 3.9%. 
the cost of finance is 96408 Well, if I were to sum up all of the interest paid, in fact, I'll put a little sum right down here, you're going to see that that total is 96408 so the cost of finance is simply the sum total of all of the interest paid. Because of course, if we were paying the full price of the house in cash, hence we were not borrowing anything, there would be no interest paid. There we go. So that is basically where cost of finance comes from. Now, this is a little bit simple in that I'm not also I'm not counting fees or other costs of purchasing a house or acquiring a loan, but this is going to be the biggest source of cost of finance. Take care.